Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Roberto Zicari. I'm the editor of EMS.org. I'm your host for the webinar today. The today webinar has to do with uh, software quality and reliability. As is often the case in life, uh, quality is an important feature, but especially when we talk about complex systems, the systems that are not reliable are actually creating a lot of problems. So I'm quite happy to have two distinguished panelists in the webinar that I'd like to quickly introduce to you. We have Barry Morris, CEO of Undo. Barry has a name in the industry as being a uh, serial entrepreneur and quite famous in, in the um, scene. And we have Dale Vile, distinguished analyst of Freeform Dynamics. Freeform Dynamics has conducted a uh, survey called optimizing the software supplier and custom relationship and based upon the results of this uh, survey they will uh, start talking about some of the insights and Barry will complement it uh, in between so Dale the uh, word is on you thank you Great, thanks Roberto, and it's really good to be talking to your audience. I was a, a, a database architect earlier in my career, and you may have seen from that previous slide the amount of uh, grey hair and my grey beard um, that uh, uh, I've been involved in this industry for quite a while. But today is a really interesting topic. We've, uh, as you said, Roberto, we're, we're covering uh, uh, software reliability, um, and uh, to do that, we're going to run through the following agenda. So look very briefly at the business context, why are we having this discussion today? Um, and why it's important to look beyond software quality into looking at overall reliability, which uh, that will be a bit more meaningful to you by the end of uh, our, our 30 minutes, I hope. Um, what will naturally fall out of that is a discussion of some of the challenges and imperatives specifically to do with software diagnostics. And, um, uh, and then we're gonna lead on from there and look at some solutions in that space, particularly what Undo can offer uh, around flight recording technology. And uh, if you're not familiar with that, you, you, you'll find that pretty pretty interesting and compelling. Um, we're gonna finish off. We know from a lot of the research we do at Freeform Dynamics, um, that people tell us continuously that one of the big problems in engineering teams, development teams, and so on, is making the case for better tooling, uh, investment in uh, making things more efficient and more effective. Um, so we're gonna provide a you know, a few ideas on, on what you might work into your business case when you're trying to drive improvements. And we'll finish off with some final thoughts. So as Roberto says, we, uh, we're we talking here about the results of a research study that we conducted recently. Uh, the, the Here is one of the first questions we asked during that research. This was an online survey of uh, 354 respondents, I think we had in total. Uh, this question says, generally speaking, how important is software reliability availability to your business or that of your customers if you're a supplier? And the way we phrased that question was deliberate because we were conscious that we had two constituents within our survey base. One of them was enterprises, organizations that take advantage of either commercial software products or, or custom developed software, and then suppliers, the, uh, the guys who actually make the software and deliver it into customers. So in the enterprise uh, group, we had a whole range of industries from retail, manufacturing, telecom, financial services, you know, a pretty good cross section there of, of what we might call enterprise user organizations. On the supplier side, we had roughly 50-50 split between ISVs and uh, a, a group comprised of integrators, software houses, uh, organizations developing more bespoke software. What all of the suppliers had in common though is that they're delivering software solutions into uh, the uh, a customer base and then supporting those solutions thereafter. Now looking at the results on this particular chart, uh, absolutely no surprise in terms of the response to this question. Uh, almost all of the respondents uh, acknowledge that software reliability and availability was either critical or important and we know how much software is embedded in so many aspects of a modern business. Um, the, the one point I would make is that software was used in a very sort of inclusive sense here. So um, not necessarily the, the, the end application, but it could be the individual components uh, in the application stack. And that's important because obviously when we're talking about reliability, 
any application or service is only as reliable as its weakest link in, in the whole equation. Now, if software is uh, that important and, and that critical from an availability perspective, then clearly when it goes wrong, uh, it has consequences. So the next question in our survey uh, that we've got up here is, in your experience, what's the disruptive potential of the following type of software issue from an enterprise business perspective? And when we look at this chart, there's quite a lot on it, so let me just talk through it and then you'll that'll help you with um, this chart and subsequent charts as well. On the left-hand side, we got the responses from our enterprise, that's the customer viewpoint. And on the right-hand side, we got our responses from suppliers. And the more red you see, the uh, more potential for disruption and pain uh, there is if, if this kind of incident occurs. So clearly, as you would expect, a complete system failure or anything that leads to data corruption, uh, we've referred to those as major incidents, um, you know, that, that, that can be very disruptive and, and both suppliers uh, and their customers understand uh, that and the criticality of software uh, in that context. Um, but it's not just major incidents that, that we asked about. We, we also talked about some other things uh, uh, that people experience on, on an ongoing basis. Um, might, might be, you know, one in a hundred, one in a thousand transactions getting screwed up, intermittent processing corruption, for instance. It might be uh, just the odd failure here and there, maybe just for the odd number of users, maybe not, not all of your users. It may be unexpected program behavior, uh, you know, some, some logic problem or, or navigation problem even. Uh, even performance can be an issue. If, if, if performance is hit very hard for whatever reason, um, then that can be as damaging and disruptive as the application uh, just simply uh, crashing or, or, or failing. Effectively, it, it, it's not able to do what it's supposed to do. And I think, um, you know, the, the, the stuff we're looking at, the bottom half of this chart, is something that's, that's easy to overlook. We, we tend to focus often on the major incidents and not so much on the, uh, on the stuff that we see there, um, the, the, those last four. So Barry, let me bring you in at this, this point. Do you have any sort of comments, particularly on that bottom part of the equation um, from your experience? Yeah, Dale. Hi, thanks. Uh, yes, the um, my, my my feeling is that um, we, we tend to see things that are very serious, kind of downtime t sorts of problems on the one hand, and of course those are what gets the the, the, the headlines. Um, but uh, but when you talk to people, the the, the sorts of systems, sorts of challenges that are more sort of lighter weight, if you like, are all about cost and risk and. Uh, the in, enormous investment across the industry in in addressing things that aren't aren't necessarily kind of firefighting situations. Um, so it is really both of those things. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if what we're looking at here is is uh, a business risk and disruption, uh, I think it's easy as well to forget the people side of things because at the end of the day, uh, a lot of what goes on in and around IT and technology is, is very dependent on trust and people working together, you know, the, the enterprise IT team uh, being seen to be supporting the business in, in the right kind of way. And when people lose trust, that, that has all kinds of consequences in terms of how effectively they work together. So one of the things we looked at in the research as well was what are the kinds of things that impact uh, particularly business stakeholder and business user satisfaction when it comes to software failures. And interestingly, you know, top of the list here, uh, what we're seeing uh, on the left-hand side of, of, of this table, issues that drag on and no one can really explain why they're dragging on. So these are sort of undiagnosed issues. And, and um, th this is what causes uh, a, a lot of trust issues when it comes to software and, uh, and whether you feel you can rely on software from, from a, a sort of personal perspective. Um, and from an IT perspective, it, it kind of makes IT look a little bit incompetent when you have these kind of issues that go on and on and on. Um, when the IT team is unable to mobilize a supplier to help, it just makes the, the, the IT team look weak. Um, when uh, you, you've got users being forced to use uh, disruptive and inconvenient workarounds, now, IT tends to look a little bit uncaring or out of touch um, uh, when that happens. Uh, so you can see why these things drive satisfaction issues. A constant stream of minor issues just makes everyone look sloppy. That's involved in that delivery chain. Um, quick to diagnose but slow to fix makes you look a little bit disorganized. Um, so as I say, this kind of human dimension is really important. Um, and if you're listening to this as a supplier, 
then uh, the, the, the big call to action here is just, just be aware that you need to support that internal IT team. And uh, if you let them down, it, it's those guys that are in the front line that uh, that that then impacts the level of trust that they have with the business, and ultimately it means that it, it's going to be more difficult for them to work with you and for for them to work with their their business colleagues as well. The great news though is, if you are quick to diagnose and fix problems, uh, IT is often seen as saving the day, um, regardless of what the the original cause was of those problems. So. Uh, you can make yourself look like heroes if you're in the in the IT team and you're able to pull that off. Problem is though, it's easy to say, quickly diagnose and fix, but it's a lot harder to do. And during the research, we looked at some of the reasons for that. Um, here, we, we, we're just asking, how much would you agree or disagree with the following statements in relation to diagnosing and fixing issues? Again, we've got the enterprise and supplier view. And um, you'll see here that, uh, Things that are obvious when you say them, but actually it, they're easy to um, to forget, and they do lead to some um, some issues that do need to be tackled head on. So troubleshooting software in a complex production environment can be hard. You know, we, we kind of know that, and and everyone is 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 agreeing that that's the case. Um, it's not just about the software, but the conditions under which software is running when problems occur. Uh, customers, employer, and suppliers. Uh, often need to work together to figure out what's going on. It may not be just about the software, it's, it's to do with the environment, as we've, we, we've just said. It's the two together, and, and maybe even what's happening at a particular moment in time when the problem occurred that, that, that's led to the issue. Um, and, and working that out when you've only got one party involved, um, is it could be quite hard. Uh, recreating the conditions under which an incident occurred can be hard. I mean, it, it, this is just very, very practical stuff. And um, the one thing that comes out most strongly, you can see here, uh, most people strongly agree, intermittent, intermittent problems that are difficult to reproduce are a particular challenge. I think we've all been there. Anyone involved in IT delivery knows that. Um, Barry, I mean, th th this is kind of stuff I guess you guys are coming across all the time. Yes, you know, you've, you've sort of referred to kind of diagnosing and fixing as the two pieces. And diagnosis, uh, best practice is, is really about reproducing the problem, um, and that's generally very hard. It's hard to reproduce the, the, the environment. Uh, quite often, even if you do, it's quite hard to, to reproduce the problem because it may be intermittent or or, or, or something that happens one every one in every million runs. And so, um, so identifying the problem in the first place, that diagnosis step, is the non-linear piece of it. Um, and fixing it is, is hard as well. And we would probably take the view that. Mm -hmm. with is 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 to be data driven uh, to be able to find to be able to to, to identify um, those problems and reproduce them without having to re reproduce the entire system. Yeah, and I think one thing that I, I'd probably add to that is, you know, systems are becoming more and more complex, particularly as we go down the, the sort of component architecture route. Um, you know, we may be uh, pulling in all kinds of inputs into um, a particular operation, e even sort of external services, access through APIs and so on. So in, you know, the, the, the troubleshooting side of things is, is certainly not getting uh, any easier compared to the days of, um, you know, uh, please don't take this as me advocating monolithic applications, but, uh, you know, arguably it was a little bit easier sort of navigating through what was going on back in those days uh, today everything is a lot more complex and difficult. So therefore it has to be data related, as you say, Barry. Yeah, very much. Very much. Um, so uh, if you've signed up to this, uh, as you obviously have, uh, you're listening to this, then you will have seen this before, because I think we put this on the, si si uh, on the sign up screen. But basically what we're saying here is that uh, diagnostic failures uh, have consequences. So, you know, if you, if you can't diagnose something, you know, over 90% of people are, are on the enterprise side are saying that there's a good chance that that, that issue is going to come back to bite. You know, they're seeing the same problems over and over again. Um, it could be that they couldn't be reproduced, or it could be that, um, you know, they have seen them before, but they they, they just haven't been able to diagnose them. Um, those, those fleeting events that are difficult to capture. And then on the software maker side, it's the same sort of set of issues, but, but in the engineering team and QA teams themselves. Uh, so Barry, is there anything you want to sort of add to to this particular slide? Some interesting stats here. I think the the thing that's just 
stunning about this is is the percentages. They're 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 not in the 60s and 70s. You know, these are 90% kind of responses, um, and I think it's just the pervasiveness of it. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see a bit more of a breakdown. At the end, we'll give you a link to the research report, by the way, which has a little bit more um, color around these numbers. Um, so you'll be able to see some of the, the specifics behind this. But yes, they, they, they are pretty big numbers, uh, which kind of brings us on to the, the, the practical question of, well, what, what can we do? What, 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 what can we uh, throw at this to actually help with the problem? And you've got some pretty good stuff at Undo, Barry. Yeah, uh, as you as you've sort of identified, um, reliability is becoming the issue, um, even even more than, than than quality, which underlies it. Uh, reliability being this, the, the the end user view of things, um, and uh, and and with with software really running our our modern world to an increasing degree, increasingly mission critical, in, increasingly twenty four by seven and five nines and, and things like that. Um, and uh, just by, by analogy, you, we're familiar with the fact that with aircraft, if something goes wrong, if you have a crash or a sort of unexpected behavior, um, you get out the black box or the flight recorder, you rewind it and you find out exactly what the status was of, of the system and, and that it was the, the engine that failed or pilot error or something like that. Um, there's no such thing uh, to date in, in computers. There's no, there's no recording of everything that happens uh, on a computer uh, that you can just rewind and find out exactly what happened. Um, so Undo's been now working for some years on this issue of software reliability. Um, and, uh, and, and, and we're really part of a new category of software, which is around software flight recording um, and with our live recorder product. Um, the product is is, re is really about the, what I've just described, the ability to, on the one hand, you can see on the screen, so the, the two kind of packagings of the product, um, which is on, on the one hand, uh, uh, monitoring and, and, and recording uh, t in the test environment to get your tests and test suite green and keep it green, green. Uh, and also to record um, in, a, in, in a production environment um, to be able to deal with kind of time to resolution of, of downtime kinds of failures. So, um, so that's the basic background as to as to what the what the undo technology does. Um, the uh, so so how does it work? Um, well, of course, the uh, what, what what this does is it, it enables users to kind of identify problems quickly and get to fixing them quickly, uh, whether that's in test or in 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 production. Uh, there are th sort of three key pieces to the technology, and we don't have time now to go into them. Um, one piece of it is essentially a virtualization layer. You can see the diagram here is to do with a database server, but that might as well be your application or anything else. And the virtualization technology really encapsulates that. Um, and so, so we're running your code, we're inserting ourselves between your code and the operating system. The second piece of it is, is really about the ability to record the minimal amount of information that allows us to completely reconstruct the state of the system at any point in the recording. Um, and and so that's the kind of recording aspect of it, and uh, and then there's the piece of it which is uh, which which is the ability to come back and uh, and and view it through typically debugging technology. Um, the, uh, the 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 sort of uh, point here is about kind of the reproducibility. Um, I, I mentioned before that re reproducing problems is the fundamental um, challenge in, in 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 current debugging techniques and 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 sort of fault resolution techniques. Uh, if you've got a recording, you've got 100% re reproducibility. You don't need the original environment. You don't need to, to tr try and recreate anything. Uh, we can rerun anything at very fine levels of the same register compatibility, the same threading, the same whatever it is that we are running in that particular recording, um, which massively reprodu reduces um, the time to resolution uh, of those problems and allows you to get at those intermittent kinds of faults. Uh, in a in a research bar, we did ask some questions uh, around this, and we'll come on to look at some responses uh, around perceptions of of this kind of flight recording solution in, in a second. Uh, but one of the uh, let's say sentiments that came through from that, in terms of the feedback we got, was a lot of people were a little bit skeptical. It, it sounds almost too good to be true that you can you can pull this kind of thing off. So. Uh, this is quite hard, isn't it, to, to, to do this kind of stuff? So you, you guys have, have tackled a, a, a pretty serious, serious, seriously difficult problem to solve here. Do you, do you want to say a few words on some of the practical sort of challenges? Certainly. It's, 
is very complex and it, it, it sounds it's, it, it sounds first of all amazing to do because it is um, but it's the level of complexity of of something like a hypervisor or of sort of a VMware kind of an engine um, we it's it involves a lot of kernel technology it involves a lot of, of, of deep understanding of how processes work and how the system fits together um, it does naturally have uh, like any virtualization technology it has some costs there's a, there's a you know there's a there's a performance penalty that you'll pay to run it uh, just like it would for VMware or some kind of hypervisor technology um, it is it's taken us years to build um, and uh, and there's a lot of detail to a system like this um, but what it does deliver is the ability to entirely reproduce the full state of a system at any point uh, in its in its execution. Yeah, and I must admit that uh, it, when, when I first, uh, when you, you guys briefed us on this to begin with, it was quite interesting that we had the same thing in the back of our mind. How uh, how practical is this? And and then when you mentioned. Uh, this case study, which would be great if you could talk to, I mean, that, this really got our attention because uh, SAP HANA is one of those things that is just so hot in the industry at the moment, and this is one of your clients, isn't it? It is, and I think just to give people a sense of it, if you're not familiar with it, uh, SAP HANA is a, an in-memory database system that typically runs on terabyte class machines with up, uh, up to thousands of cores. Uh, it's a highly multi-threaded system has to be 100% uh, uptime and 100% correctness and 100% consistency. It's a database system that is a system of record and manages people's checking accounts and things of that kind of value. Um, and they've got a huge test suite. Um, they've got fuzz, fuzz testing. They've got um, all sorts of, of kind of aggressive testing that they do against the system. And the problem that they had was that in a system as complex as that, um, they will hit they will hit problems, crashes, uh, correctness issues um, that are extremely hard to 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 to, to track down. Um, the testing group will go go back to the development group and say we saw we saw a problem. Here are some artifacts and some clues and some ideas of of what it might have been, but um, to reproduce it exactly is what's required, and um, and it was extremely hard to do. Um, we did in integrate our, our technology into, into SAP HANA. Uh, they use it as part of their, of their test suites. Um, and amongst uh, a large number of, of, of less important uh, problems, they've, they've identified um, a, a good number of, of extremely uh, critical uh, vital bugs um, that were tracked down and really couldn't have been tracked down any, any other way. Um, and you could go into the detail of those, but they they amount to race conditions and and kind of contention over memory and uh, and, and in some cases incorrect data that was being delivered. Um, so the, I suppose the point is that Hana class system. If we can if we can deal with those kinds of situations, um, we probably can deal with almost anything that's out there. Yeah, that's a it is a pretty impressive uh, story. I, I have to say. Um, uh, uh, interestingly, though, if if we if we just talk about this uh, this this idea in more of a, an abstract sense, now uh, one thing that we did find in the survey was that most people aren't aware of what can be done in 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 this space. So um, we what we had to do was 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 take the approach of really describing what we've just been through at a high level, obviously in a survey context. And when we actually described this concept of, of software flight recording technology, uh, over two thirds of, of the respondent base on both the enterprise customer side, you know, those, those guys are thinking, well, this would be great because this means we get better support from our, um, our suppliers. And obviously on the supplier side, this means that we can serve our customers better and streamline everything. Um, you know, 68% saw, saw the potential of this. Uh, software makers were more directly familiar than, than enterprises. Um, uh, so there is some awareness out there, but but the overwhelming uh, uh, impression we got from when we conducted this research was, you know, there's an important set of developments here uh, around diagnostics technology, which uh, can uh, can really help uh, a lot of the problems that we've been looking at. Uh, but still, a lot of people need to get up to speed. There's a bit of an awareness gap, which is why if you if you are listening to this, you know, really appreciate you taking the time because I think this is gonna um, this is something that, that that's worth spending time on. I mentioned earlier on. Oh, sorry, Barry. Do you want to say some words on that? I think it is that there is a trend towards essentially kind of dynamic analysis 
tools we've seen the sort of the APM revolution and other things that are kind of been about monitoring and 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 kind of real time kinds of tracking of systems and so it's part of that wave and as you say it's early uh, in terms of software flight recording but um but it's coming yeah so one of the things we mentioned earlier on was the difficulty sometimes making a business case and actually translating what sounds like good ideas into uh, things that make a tangible difference. Uh, this is a very busy slide, apologies for that. Um, as I say, you can grab a, your copy of the report and we'll give a link at the end and you can sort of look at this at your leisure. Uh, but the question here was, if the following occur repetitively, how likely are they to influence a decision to switch to an alternative supplier, um, if you're an enterprise, or if you're a supplier, to contribute to a customer's decision to switch to a competitor? So this is kind of what what are people sensitive to uh, in, in terms of things not, not going well. A couple of things at the top there you'd expect, you know, to do with relationship management, unwillingness of supplier to assume ownership, uh, unwillingness of supplier to be open and honest. These are perpetual things um, uh, in our industry that it's always difficult when things are fast moving. Um, a lot of the other stuff though on this list either directly or indirectly can be impacted by the kind of uh, solutions we're talking about and just generally getting smarter about diagnostics and remediation. Um, the, the one that I, I would pick out is uh, we hear this all the time when we talk to people both anecdotally it comes through in surveys the supplier engineering black hole you've escalated from level one support to level two and then it goes into engineering and at that point no one knows what's what's going to happen from that point onwards. Uh, and I think you know have, having technology that can help uh, in the ways that uh, Barry's described can can really accelerate that that process, both from a diagnostics point of view. So you can at least keep people informed, um, uh, and and then uh, obviously to to get the fix out there. Um, the, the the one that I I sort of picked up on was also suppliers scrabbling around seeming to rely on trial and error diagnostics. Now I think we've all had experience of that. Uh, you know we we still on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, experience that as a business ourselves uh, on the receiving end of um, support from suppliers. It doesn't create a great impression and, and it does you know, elevate the, the, the risk of switching. But the idea of this slide is you know, that people are a lot more willing to switch now and um, they will switch if you push them hard enough and you don't get these kinds of things under control. So what do you think, Barry? Does this kind of map onto your experience? Absolutely. You know, I would say that in the in the sort of uh, management of of of, a, of some kind of um, software sort of reliability challenge, it's a finger pointing moment between between the suppliers and uh, and and users. And um and the, the what's missing is information. And so people are sort of saying, well, it's 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 your, your it's your stuff that doesn't work. No, it's not my stuff that doesn't work you're doing something wrong there's a lot of that and then there are 20 questions kinds of calls that go on what did you do and how did you do and what we all these kinds of things and and it leads to kind of a, a long period of of sort of communication challenges and and diagnostic challenges which would all go away if you knew up front uh, where the problem was and and so i think that the the supplier um, and user relationship um, at that moment of firefighting is uh, is is massively improved um, if there's if there's data on the table and people can get on with how to, how to fix it. No, that, that, that's great. So um, that 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 was the material we wanted to cover in terms of the the core substance here. Um, a final thought from me that 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 I'd like to leave you with is really to underline the difference between software quality, which is a absolutely critical, obviously, and overall reliability, which is a function of the environment in which that software is running. And also, from a user perception perspective, how well and how effectively you react when things uh, go wrong and incidents do occur. And all those things together uh, really um, define what we mean by reliability. So so that, that, that's why, that's, as we say in the title of this, uh, it, it it's about thinking beyond software quality. Barry, any sort of yeah. final thoughts from you? My, you know, my, my, my thought is that um, fr from a vendor perspective, I, I, I believe that the next generation of tools are going to target reliability 
Um, for me, quality is an open loop um, activity, whereas where, whereas reliability is a closed loop activity. Um, you know, quality is 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 more about forward looking design and process decisions, whereas reliability is more about about monitoring and diagnosing and fixing observed problems. Um, and I'd say that you know where, where, where quality is about is about being sort of planning driven. Um, reliability is about being data driven. And it really is um, the, the the challenge for folks like ourselves is to deliver the data that people need that can tell them what's really going on in the system, so that they can drive to reliability. Yeah, that's a good thought, and I think that that data driven theme is really key to take away from from all of this. So I've mentioned a couple of times the report that uh, gives a lot more details uh, that that. that adds color to what we've we've gone through today uh, there's a lot of other data points with some drill down stuff and a full discussion uh, here's a link to where you can get hold of it uh, uh, i encourage you to download it and um, uh, spend a little bit of time just 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 digesting it and it may actually help you make that business case for your next round of investment in um, in, in in not just tools but but also driving uh, that customer experience that everyone is 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 aiming for. So with that, hand back to you, Roberto. Yes, uh, thank you very much. We also have a, a final slide where you have the content information for Undo because uh, maybe some of you are not familiar, so you could get more information over there. And before concluding. Um, I like to ask myself a question because I think it would be quite useful for people that are not familiar with the software Undo. Barry, what is really the difference between what you have and the typical software debugging uh, tools that are being used for many, many years? Uh, well, Roberta, the, uh, the the primary difference is the fact that we're we're able to record everything that goes on in the system which allows us to treat that recording a little bit like a video. We can go forwards, we can go backwards, we can find out what happened. We can reproduce that same problem as many times as you want because it's just a recording. Um, and so that ability to, be able to know exactly what happened at every point and to ob observe it historically um, is the big difference and I think is the forward-looking uh, revolution. Okay, well, that's very good. And um, maybe just the last question is, um, you, you show this example of SAP HANA, which is an extremely complex uh, software product, but is your uh, software capable of doing this kind of uh, intelligent understanding of problems for any kind of software? You have a specific domain that you're specialized with general purpose. Um, it's general purpose in the sense that it operates at a system level on Linux, um, and so it's, a, it's essentially a, a, a kernel level technology on Linux, um, and it uh, and it and it can work in any kind of an environment. Um, there are many of our customers that have large sort of single process kinds of systems. An increasing number of them have multi-process systems. Many of them have multi-threaded kinds of complicated systems. Um, the places where people are, find find it most valuable is where there are uh, are uh, sort of uh, um, non-deterministic environments um, and because that's often where you find the intermittent problems that are extremely hard for humans to find in any other way. Okay, thanks very much. Um, actually, we are at the end of our time, so I'd like to thank the attendees. I'd like to thank the uh, panelists, Barry Morris and Dale Weil. And that was the webinar beyond software quality. It is overall reliability that matters. And I'd like to also inform that I have uh, conducted an interview with Barry and Dale that will be published soon. So stay tuned. You have now uh, plenty of information and you can certainly follow up in case you have more questions. I'd like to thank everybody for the attention and we conclude our webinar for today. <laughs>